Good afternoon to one and all present here. Honorable guest Bala sir, dignitaries on and off the dais. I, Pius Gundeta, student manager from Balaji Institute of International Business, on behalf of Sri Balaji Society, feel immense pleasure to introduce to you our guest, Mr. Shantanu Das. Sir is an HR executive leader with a master's degree from XLRI and 18 plus years of work experience in major multinational companies. Added significant strategic and operational value in business restructuring, talent management, acquisition of skill sets, employee engagement, setting up greenfield projects, proactive employee relations, and instituting robust people processes. At present, is working as Vice President HR of Iwami Limited, which includes brands like Boroplus, Fair and Handsome, Navratna, and Zandu and Manthopolis Balm. Previously, he has worked as General Manager and Head HR of Heinz India. Head Corporate HR of Saab Miller, General Manager HR of PepsiCo India Holdings Private Limited, and HR Executive of Philips India Private Limited. May I now request Mr. Santanu Das to kindly share some words of wisdom with our student managers. Sir, podium is all yours. Uh, friends, this needs to be told because this reflects what his passion is all about and what his commitment is all about and what his sincerity is all about. Sir is from Calcutta, a mummy, and uh, an invitation goes to him and uh, he is very, whenever there is an invitation from the student side, he says, okay, he generally accepts. And that too, if it is from Balaji, hectic meetings, board meetings yesterday, late night, goes to home, five o'clock flight early in the morning, four o'clock again used to start, some problem in the airport. Another four and a half hours travels from Calcutta to come to this place and to interact with you all. Again, from the airport, another one and a half hour from the straight away is here now. Now, this is something which we all have to learn. Now, this is some quality, uh, I think, which we all have to adopt on behalf of President board of directors, faculties and student community. I thank sir for taking all the pain for coming here. And we bow before your commitment sir. It's a good example for us for all the student to emulate. Thank you very much sir. Respected Bala sir, members of the faculty and uh, dear students, thanks for the kind words. And uh, I have uh, last come here in 2011. So it's a pleasure to be back again and uh, good to interact with students. It's a, I relish and cherish interacting with students because with students you don't get much competition so it's, you can speak as much. So, uh, well, I, I was uh, grappling what to talk, talk to you all. So I thought that let me give you my views on uh, what should motivate you once you go out of this campus and go to the corporate world. And what are some of the myths and challenges that you may have? Just one question for you, and this entire session is on that. What will you do with your future? That's all that this presentation for one hour is, or maybe whatever time I have. What will you do with your future? That's the fundamental question that we all have to ask ourselves at any point of time, especially when you are graduating. So. You come out of the college, 
right decision wrong decision what kind of decision etc so but what is it that you want to do with your future fundamentally ask that question to yourselves even if you i mean it's not it doesn't it's not important what i say or what others say you should ask this question to yourself and have an answer to that question so there are two choices that one may have with respect to future let me start with the second choice you can just choose to survive there's a second choice i can choose to survive there are many many people in this world who chooses this option no not right or wrong or you can choose to succeed so if i have to choose to succeed if i have to choose to survive i may not have to come to balaji institute then i can still survive but if i come to this institute and go out of this institute go to the corporate world then if i have to choose to succeed if that's the choice so if you choose to succeed and decide to prosper and commit to focused goals anything is possible have commitment to your goals but the first is the choice to succeed if you choose to succeed rest follows if you choose to survive nothing of this is relevant so that's the choice that you guys that students have fundamentally this is my own belief all of us all of us are born to succeed no one in this world is born to fail we are born to succeed get that confidence in yourself fundamentally that is what you will take your best can still be in front of you the future is in your hands not in anyone else's hands future is in your hands inside you is untapped potential who will find this potential for you no one except for you don't expect your faculty to find out the potential for you don't expect that you join a company they will find out the potential for you you find out the potential for yourself because you're born to succeed that's the fundamental thinking that you should have when you go out to the corporate world or whenever if you want to do your own business it doesn't matter whatever you do have set of values hopes dreams believe in it dream on it but before that let me give you my some of the myths that mbas or the people have especially and it's important to talk about this myths so i have 10 myth buster the myths that we graduates from these colleges have having an mba degree means you will always have the right answer this is a myth you have this myth you go to a world of bunch of veterans you will get killed on day one you will get killed have the humility to learn if you believe that i have the mba degree and i have all the right answers in the world that's one of the biggest myth that will eat you alive right from day one whatever i have done the courses in leadership people management etc are all unimportant what is important to me is if i know the marketing fundas and you know if i know the business no 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 don't ever have that misconception people handling of people managing people having the leadership for people to look up at you is a very very strong fundamental as an when you grow up in the corporate world the people who are reaching the heights of you know at, at the apex level it's assumed that they know their job 
but there are some people who reach the top there are some people who don't reach the top and in my own experience i have seen the people who reach the top are the people who know the people values who know the leader who has that leadership quality because your functional skill will take you to that point is assumed but before beyond that what is important is your people skill your leadership skills if i believe that i am smarter than other people i can only reach one point so these are myths so i have as i said that when i address students there is no challenge so i speak as what i want but this is my view that never think you see the whole point that i am driving is be humble in life don't think we are very smart people there are many people who join uh, and people especially from these college good colleges premium colleges they come out they become area sales managers and they have all these field officers who are about 20 years of experience now you can't beat them in anything it's just that you are lucky by virtue of this degree that you are there but don't ever assume that you know i know the job better i know it's you know i am a smart guy and i'm a smarter guy it is not required you can work even without thinking those now this is another myth that i feel mba degree will make a lot of will give you a lot of money so will you keep on hopping jobs because every job gives you a higher salary but then you also fall flat after some time in life so mba degree gives you a license to work that's all you should take money is a secondary factor don't work for salaries if you work for salaries then salaries will one day eat you work for the role work for the value system work for what it gives to you in your personality in your character don't work for money so all the secrets of business i have learnt in 2 years so what is there is nothing to learn so this is this in fact it just gives you an opening to an to 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 learning this is my view 2 years gives you an opening so there is lot to learn i have seen many many people who stop reading after reaching a point they stop reading books so so an mba is your ticket to the inner circle you know what a inner circle is that okay i've done an mba so absolutely it's my ticket license to the inner circle to the inner circle means when i'm saying inner circle means the corporate world the senior management it's a very very hard way to go there remember in a company there is only one ceo there are not five ceos so so it's it's you need to earn it you need to work hard for it you need to 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 have sustainable constant drive passion dedication to take you till the end if you lose it in between then you stuck you are stuck in between this i have covered i uh, somewhere i feel that it's important to tell the students that you know one of the biggest virtue for all of us in our lives both in personal lives as well as professional lives is how we handle pressure it's i don't have today is not the forum to talk about on this but talk but this is a very very important piece ability to handle pressure in both personal and professional front because a day will come when you will get surrounded by your personal front you will get surrounded by your professional front equally the ability to handle pressure is a great indicator of success in my view very very great indicator of success never ever think that it's only strategic no transactions you don't have to go to the fields you don't have to go to the market you just have to you know do powerpoint presentations and and make it no it's not is absolutely operational is absolutely transactional never ever think that you know i am born to build a strategy it's it's good to have a strategy it's good to think on strategy but but first few years have the ability to learn working with your own hands dirtying your own hands 
that's the only way you learn if you go in hr you should never ever join you should first go to the factories how to deal with the union how to deal with the workmen similarly if you go into sales first deal with the field force with the with the distributors with the wholesalers that's where you learn lot of life is there for you to sit in the corporate work you know the corporate towers and uh, and draw strategies but first few years have the ability have the tenacity to to work in the fields in the work in the market work in the factories that's where you learn it's a very uh, it's and i can stand here and say this because i have done it it's not so easy but that's the way you should one should grow so certainly the point i was trying to drive having a degree mba degree does not definitely mean automatic success it doesn't it doesn't mean automatic success you have to work for that success as i said if you are born to succeed then work for that success it doesn't come automatically so i just have a few messages for all of you that you know there are some fundamental values and beliefs that i believe that you should get is it what is it is my success my my prosperity is it in my hands or is it controlled by environment is it governed by principles that are is it do i have a set of principles for myself if you don't have a set of principles for yourself then you will get controlled by environment so for example if it is so there was this uh, this example that there was a ship which was going and the captain is saying that please change he was there was a lot of storm so he was telling the other on a wireless he was telling the captain that change your change your uh, direction change your ship's direction and the other captain was telling that i can't change you have to change he said then you will land up in trouble he says i will not land up in trouble it is you who will land up in trouble i will not change my radar or direction then finally this captain realized that he was talking to the guy who was handling a lighthouse a lighthouse will remain a lighthouse whether it's sea storm whatever so values a set of values and principles that you have will remain with you and it's time at this juncture it is important for you to determine your set of values and principles that will not change because if that changes then you are controlled by environment so so i have covered this but i still want to believe see it's the foundation of success is all of these words integrity humility courage simplicity modesty and these are something which should be in your basic characteristics if you, that is missing then the route to success is difficult and these are some values that i believe should not be compromised if you compromise on integrity you have compromised your life there are numerous examples on this where people have stuck to the ground on right grounds ethical grounds and you will face lot of these challenges in industries so so have these very ingrained in yourselves the foundation of success depends on some of these words which are very very powerful words i mean there is no time to go into such detail but these are very powerful words so problems in life are very if you ask me a serious in nature so either we can go for a quick fix or is there some technique at the end of the day it 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 depends on what you want to do so i just have these you know this one i'm just giving some examples so this positive mental attitude you know which is there's a lot of this i have from now onwards the in the presentation there's a lot from uh steven covey's uh, uh book but i have just taken some extracts so a positive mental attitude you know he talks of pma so be positive stay positive in the worst of times as well stay positive 
because if i stay positive i think positive and i determine my attitude and which itself determines the way i want to govern my life because negativity in 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 whichever sense does not help any one of us at all so if something does not help us so logically may be stay positive so so the the foundation of success is determined by some fundamental principles of human effectiveness it is not quick fix it is not a set of uh you know uh, rhetorics or good words i speak or you know i speak very smartly no something which is very deep inside which is your core values and system which governs and which is your set of principles which will take you through your life and that is what my definition of success is so one so let me talk of some of these basic things in a in a in so when we you know what we do so once we determine our values and then we what we repeatedly do whatever you do well do it repeatedly that's excellence don't do it as a one off exercise so whatever you do if you do it well do it repeatedly and then that becomes an habit so not the i am not referring to habits like brushing teeth in the morning no i don't i am referring to something little more it is more of knowledge skills and desires why what how want to do so it's fundamentally there are three three of these which are important for you to make your ability your your you know certain acts of yours which you are doing well as a habit you have to have a knowledge in anything that you do you should know what to do and why to do if your boss tells you to something to do i mean tells you something to do something you should if you don't know why to do you will never be able to do it so when someone tells you what to do while you have the knowledge to do but why to do also is important and then comes how to do it and that is where you know all these learning and you know getting into the roots getting into the basics learning the you know working your way out working with your own hands this is where so the skills so when you have the knowledge when you know what to do you know why to do you know how to do then fundamentally the last piece is the most important you should have the desire to do because if you have the knowledge to do if you know why to do if you have the skills to do but if you don't know if you don't want to do then it's not we will not be able to do so the desire to do is something which will come from your own end it will not come from anyone and that is where the positivity lies that is where the positive mental attitude that i was referring to that is where all the other aspects you have to have the desire to do you have to if you it, it does not come automatically i can vouch for that you have to have a desire to do what you want to do whatever you want to do have the desire to do it and do it with perfection so it's it's the significant problems you know einstein this is a very he said it very well that if i have to in the same level of thinking hmm in the same level of thinking if i had to solve the problems then those problems won't be there so that means we have to now go into the next level of thinking and in that so if today what you are if today what i am this can solve let's say some problems then it is assumed that i have to do something more in order to get rid of this problem otherwise this problem will remain because whatever my current status is this is problem so that means there is somewhere i have to do something more by which this problem goes so i'll i'll elaborate on that and and in order to so before i elaborate on that this thought this is very important for students you know when we talk of habits when we talk of knowledge skill desire you know 
he was just coming out of colleges as i as i've said that more sp- energy is spent in first few minutes than rest of the journey to break the gravity pull you know is for a space shuttle is the first that's the maximum energy required after that it does not so now at this juncture where you stand and where you are now that you will go to the to the to the world of professionals or corporate world this is the time where the maximum energy would be spent should be spent by you to define the habits for yourselves to define the set of principles for yourselves which will take you for the rest of your life this is the time when you need to introspect when you need to sit think and say that okay this is what because this is the time when the maximum energy would be required once you cross this for the first 5 6 years when you have these definitions right in your mind for yourself rest of the life will relatively be easier now there are there are these three sets you know in i'll just come to this so there are this every all of us when we are born we are at the first level which is dependence we depend on our parents we depend on our mother we depend on our teacher then there are three set of habits which should make us independent which is where it's i who can do this and this is also a quite a quite applicable if you slowly realize even in your personal lives so it's just not these are not something which is only for the professional world it is for you as a person or we as a person so from dependence first we have to mature to independence and from independence then you have to mature to interdependence but first we should get our act right on independence that is not i i mean that is not dependent on others so what is it that i can do on my own and what i should do on my own and then comes interdependence where i need others to help me out so this is a this is the maturity you know continuum in the sense that you have to you have to come out of dependence to independence first so there is a lot of difference between interdependence and dependence dependence means the environment is controlling me so there is a difference so interdependence means where i am along with others in this society in this world so so this independence fundamentally there are three habits which i believe and which you know which which takes you from a dependence to independence first and foremost be proactive when i say proactive it's like you know it's it's that i'm sure you may have done that in your science pavlov's experiment so where that experiment was where a dog or where an animal is actually dependent on some stimulus for him to respond yeah correct now that is called dependence now if we have a choice either we live that way so there is some stimuli and then i respond or we can proactively change our programming and we respond proactively so this is the original philosophy you have a response you have a stimulus you respond but there is another model which is the proactive model where i have a freedom to choose to respond the way i want to respond in that experiment the the dog had a the the, the it was an experiment where i could choose only the way i you know that was determined here all of us have a freedom to choose in order to respond so for example if if someone like me or anyone would have seen a leper in the road 
I would have just got away and gone. But Mother Teresa had a choice of not going away but picking up the leper and going to a missionary. So that is called freedom to choose. Now that freedom to choose is something which we can always have for ourselves. I can have the freedom to choose my stimuli, my response. That is called proactive. So there are numerous examples. Even in, let's say, prior to, in election commission, prior to TN session, no one even knew the name of the election commissioner. No one even knew. And the same set of rules, Supreme Court, uh, the, the Constitution of India has the same set of rules for any election commission. There is no change. But TN session had a freedom to choose the way he interpreted election commission. I probably were very young that time, but, but that, that is called freedom to choose. I have a freedom to choose my response. And that with all the education that I have, with all the bringing that I have, that is what I believe that we all should execute and exercise this freedom to choose my response. And that is where your self-imagination, your self-awareness, imagination, conscience, independent will, the desire to do, the desire to get that act right, that is where all these principles come. So don't respond without giving yourself a freedom to choose how to respond. All great men, all, be it industry, be it anywhere, if you take this one thing this is common is all had the freedom to choose their response. And that is very, very fundamental. So, in nutshell, as human beings, we are responsible for our own life and our behavior is a function of our decisions. This is our decision, our decision to choose the way we want to choose how to live our life. That is fundamental. If you don't have that freedom to choose, if you don't give your freedom to this freedom to yourself, you will only live a life which is to survive. So these are these famous quotes, you know, no one can hurt you without your consent. I can't hurt you. If I, if I don't want to get hurt, if I have the freedom not to get hurt, you can do anything to me, I'll not get hurt. So, research has indicated and given, and this is a very empirical view, that people exercising proactive, vis-a-vis -vis people not exercising proactiveness, the change in human beings is 5,000%. That's, that's research. Just this simple proactive, the way we have defined here, or way we are presenting today, that s simple exercise gives 5,000 times more effect in a human being. So, more and more you are proactive in life, more and more your circle of influence will go up and your circle of concern will come down. That means you will influence others, you will influence yourself. So please, I mean this is a, this is a point that I was telling that even in these presentations, you know, even if some words hit you, that's more than enough. So take the words that will hit you and, and do something. That's the, that's the way I believe these seminars should be and this is the way you should take these seminars. So, so coming back to the presentation, circle of influence, more and more you are proactive that grows up. So in any circle of influence, one thing is fundamental. If you keep make a promise, keep it. If you set a goal, work to achieve it. That's very fundamental. If you make a promise, keep it. If you set a goal, work to achieve it. So that was one habit which I thought I'll do it. The second one is, you know, in your professional life, if I, I can, it's not something, you should do this exercise. What do you want to become five years from now? What do you want to become three years from now? What do you want to become one year from now? Ten years from now? Thirty years from now? Do this exercise sometime, you will struggle to find an answer. It's not easy, but have an answer. 
take time from your busy schedules and try attempting these answers one year from now three years from now five years from now 10 years from now 20 years from now it takes lot of efforts to do this exercise but it's worth the effort visualize what you want to do visualize sometime not now you're too young sometime that when i die what should people think about me what should people talk about me should they talk that i was a criminal or i was a money minded guy what you think about it very important not now you're too young but sometime in the life you should think how should i be remembered what should be written in my graveyard that is very important that's called visualizing now if i visualize what i want to do then comes the fundamental question are you working towards it if you don't visualize then you you don't guide your you know you don't guide your focus and attention to that and of course i mean there has to be a link so if you say 30 years from now i want to do this then one year from now there has to be a linkage between those so you try doing this exercise is not an easy exercise but it's an interesting exercise what do you want to do yourself in these periods of time so it's it's it 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 will touch today's behavior tomorrow's behavior next week's behavior everything you do this exercise and this will exercise this exercise will help you to stay in the right direction otherwise you will lean against the wrong wall so so then that is where fundamentally begin with the end in mind you know that if i if i am proactive and these are all these these are very linked if i am proactive and then proactively i also visualize that begin with the end in mind that what do i want to do where do i want to go that's my that's the question in which i started and begin with that and work towards it so you know it's it's life i've seen many people they're very very busy whole day they work uh, even in students you know the whole day they study but they're not very effective so don't stay busy for the sake of staying busy is of no use stay effective so you know when when you and that is so so business is that's what i'm saying so when you want to do something when you when you when you are busy don't confuse between busyness and effectiveness you can be busy but you are not effective so it's it's you know so when when all things are created created twice so when for example brahmins you know when they wear the thread means i am born as a as a human being then the thread gives me another birth right so that's a different example so so when you begin with the end in mind the first thing is mental maps you create a mental map for yourself where do you want to go and then do rest of the activities to build towards that if you want that mental map to be done by others then you will get dependent on others do that mental map for yourself where do you want to go and then take help of others to go where you want to go so i mean there are too many slides i'm just skipping a few but and that when you do this when you begin with the end in mind there's a first skill of leadership a good leader in any sphere of work knows where he wants to go you take anyone you take gandhi you take jrd tata you knew they all had the vision where to go and then they built towards it and it's not so easy they had gone through a lot of struggles this i i i take a lot of importance to this put first things first means get your priorities right and organize and execute around priorities just life is not you know just uh, uh, games and fun it it has its element of seriousness also so have the priorities right set your priorities so so this is a very no common four generations of time management you know first there was a time when notes or checklist second we had calendars appointment books etc 
third is prioritization of values focus on goals nowadays time management is regarded as a misnomer what is time management because there's only 24 hours so what do you, you it want 24 can't become 28 so is it you man you are managing the time or you want to manage yourself so that's the point the challenge is not to manage time but to manage yourself that is fundamentally what will so time management for me is a misnomer is absolutely a bogus uh, subject i'm sorry if someone has taught you that but it's it's of no use it's is managing yourself which manages time so rather than focusing on time and things and focus on what you want to do focus on relationships focus on accomplishing results time will automatically follow and these are very time tested you must have done it in your theories you know 80% of results depend on 20% of tasks so focus on those which gives that is prioritization for me focus on results focus on what will give you what you want to do whenever in whichever sphere of life whatever you want to do so this is that famous time management matrix that many uh, professionals have earned their money for decades showing this present slide so for me this is not very more important for all of us is essentially the quadrant 3 which is essentially relationship building prevention recognizing opportunities and the rest will all there is we are finally human beings but don't focus too much on you know things which do not add too much of value to ourselves or to our success there are many things we will do obviously we'll chat we'll gossip we'll do all of those things are required but that should not be your priority so there are so so in very brief put first things first means you identify your roles you identify you select goals you schedule it weekly you adapt daily and that is very very fundamental now this is again a big big chapter you know in life lose lose win lose win win lose win there are four when you talk of relationships this is not something which is individual so when i'm saying when you're talking of relationship with others is lose lose win lose win win lose win there is no right or wrong answer in my view so in in a relationship you can lose so two enemies fighting they kill each other so they lose lose so there is no right or wrong answer but what should we do ideally preferably if not always so you know it boils down to essentially something where you do a win win now how do you describe this win win is very important suppose in a in a let's say in a corporate scenario i have seen this i'll give you this example you I, and this is live example so when the business is doing very well so the purchase guys what they do they negotiate and they lynch the ne vendors because i am doing very well now what happens is when the business stops doing well then those vendors will lynch you so probably you may not be able to relate but this is fundamentally so don't think that you know i have exploited a guy and he has lost it and i have won it it doesn't it doesn't take you much it it, it doesn't take much to for the clock to turn where you get into a hassle and he wins have the ability to think through what could be in any form of relationship what could be a win win that is more important have the ability to think through that don't have this attitude of you know today i will corner him so badly that he will suffer for the rest of his life no one suffers that way you can't make anyone suffer so this ability to win win is something which i park here you know there is you have to think about it from your own end in life what makes it win win 
because if you never ever you know like uh, there are these thinking that many of us have you know and it's not it's not i mean it's 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 human that you know i'll when i negotiate or when i talk to someone i will ensure that you know i win the debate and he goes so humiliated it doesn't it doesn't work it doesn't work at all have the ability to think win win and this ability will not be taught in a school you have to grow it through experience you have to use your own wisdom you have to use your own intelligence and that is what is very important now this is something which uh, seek first to understand then to be understood i'll tell you what it means you see fundamentally this is very important for you all to understand when you you know when you go and join corporates if you have the ability to listen half the problems are solved so for example if someone comes with a grievance to me i have two choices i don't listen i throw him out or i take action i have another choice i listen to him and also i take action i prefer the second one have the ability to listen and listening does not mean just hearing you know in schools we all learn how to read and write we don't i don't know why we don't learn how to listen that's also very important in communication i don't know of any school where listening is taught only reading and writing is taught but the third element of listening is also a form of communication and very important element of communication in my view and when i'm saying listening means i'm not talking of hearing i'm talking of genuine listening and empathy you know where i'm listening with a cause to understand what he or she is saying if you don't do that it will not help you build relationships so there are various types of listening i can ignore i can listen but i am ignoring you know it, i can pretend listening i can do selective listening like many of the judges they do selective listening to win the case which is which is what the profession probably demands i can listen on only focus on words you know something you said and i take that word and then i keep on hitting you and the most important in i think the highest evolved form of listening is empathic where you listen to understand that person you don't have to as many people grow up the ladder they stop the habit of listening because of whatever you may call is arrogance or whatever so then it 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 does not work and empathy when i say it does not mean sympathy i don't want people to pity someone we because as human beings we don't need each other's pityness you know we don't need your sympathy empathy and sympathy are very different i don't want you to just because i'm listening to someone it does not mean that i sympathize i'm listening to someone to appreciate the view that he she has these are very important these are this looks you know these points look very uh, small but these are very very important points in my view these are very very fundamental value system so you know it's it's when i just to give you a little understanding that when i'm saying empathic listening means i evaluate i probe i i, I think through then i interpret i don't jump into interpretation you know many see that okay i don't even tell you to say something i interpret what you are saying synergize so when i said when i'm saying synergize means that is a classical example that you have heard several times 2 plus 2 is not 4 2 plus 2 is 5 but how do you define that so these are all numerical ways of you know these are jargons that we use you know synergy 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 what it means actually so i also can give an i can attempt an answer so in my view synergy is essentially getting the best out of each other get the best out of each other because if you if that is what will take you to that point of synergize 
So that's the only way I can explain synergy in the sense that if you, if I am doing, when I, when is interdependent, when I am doing something, so this is very important, very, very important when you work as a team. If you try to outshine the others in your own team, you will get somewhere, one day you will, you will, the team will betray you. You are as good as your team is in the field of sports, in the field of industry, in the field of academy, anywhere you are as good what your team is. Please remember this. So, in order for a team to work the best, you should fundamentally have the ability to get the best out of the team member. So there are, you know, if there are like, there are numerous examples. If I tell you to name uh, the, the five players of a German football team, you won't know. It's difficult to take their names. But look at the way they play as a team. They get the best out of the team. Every pass that they make is to get the best out of that guy. So, that is where I believe is essentially a very, very, uh, these are six habits which I believe are fundamentally that dependence or uh, independence and interdependence. The last one is also very important, which is, you know, sharpen the axe. Sharpening the axe, when I say, it's just not, you know, the uh, axe of a woodcutter. When I say is essentially... You need to renew yourself. And one fundamental renewal, in my view, is physical fitness. It's very important. Because all the other points that I mentioned, if I'm not healthy, if I'm not fit, all will fall flat. So this looks simple, but these are very important uh, words which I believe are have come out from many of the authors. Be physically fit, be it in nutrition, be it exercise, be it your way of handling your own physical activities. Similarly, there is a lot of renewal that one I believe we should all do when it comes to enriching my knowledge. I was telling one of my bosses in one of my career that he was extremely Mm, tough for me. So I was, I told him once that, you know, one thing you can't take from me is my knowledge. You can take my leave, you can do anything you want to, but you, one thing you cannot have a say is my knowledge. This is something which I want to park with all of you. Your knowledge is something which will, which no one can take. No one. That is something which will remain with you. And today's world, there is so much of network, there is so much of this thing. Don't lose the habit of gaining your own knowledge. It's a very, very important piece. So be it reading, be it visualizing, be it whatever. Then, of course, it is, it is important to have this emotional renewal, be it in relationships, be it empathy, be it synergy, be it socializing, whatever. So this is something which is very, very personal. So there are various ways in which one does emotional and social aspect. And when I talk of spiritual, it's not religion. It's, it's essentially a bigger word where I'm talking of value system, where I'm talking of beliefs which are fundamental to me. So if I, so it's, it's just like, you know, it's just like if you, if you enter a temple or if you enter a religious place, you open your shoes. So there's no one talks to you about it, right? It's given. So some things should in your life should be especially the principles and value system, should be very, very fundamental. It should be at the core of your heart. It is not that, you know, it can change like just one wind comes and in the lighthouse falls. It doesn't fall. So if you are happy, then keep doing whatever you are doing. If you are not, if you want to be happy, then change something. As, as I showed in one of my slides. If your current problems get solved by your current way of working, if you're sorry, if your problems do not get solved by your current way of working, then you have to change your working. So this is very, if you're happy, if you're happy with whatever you are, then do that. 
If you are not, then you have to change something in order to become happy. And that change is your choice. Is always your choice. That change is no one else's choice. Is your choice. So this is where I believe. Uh, so seize the opportunities. You are growing. You are coming out of institutes, going to good co companies, going maybe you will do your own business, whatever you want to do. Grab the opportunities in your path, but do it with a strong foundation of success and foundation of value system. And believe in yourself. Know that you are born to succeed. If you believe in that, then you will seize the opportunities. So believe in yourself. Know what, who you are and that you are good enough to change. And don't lest it for others to make the change for you. Keep the change, do the change for yourself from your own end. And life is not so simple that you know everything is uh, lovely, green pasture and everything will nothing. A lot of hardships, a lot of turmoils, a lot of relationship issues, a lot of professional issues, everything will be there. But this is something which will keep you ticking irrespective of the problems. And this never ever give up. That is not something which is in our normal DNA. Don't ever give up. Keep trying. And with this, thank you very much. The house is now open for questions. Any questions, if you have, if at all, I'll be attempting answers. Good. So I can interpret it in two ways. Either I have understood it fully or the other way you know what I am saying. Yep. So thank you. It's nice coming here. Thanks for all the warmth. And I hope to come again. Thank you, sir. Thank you.